If you want to be a good goalie, you need to be good at this. All right, today we're going to be talking about the perimeter. This is one of the most question things that I get asked about on a daily basis and for good reason. It is confusing. What should I be doing? What shouldn't I be doing? When should I be doing this? When should I be doing that? Well, today I'm going to answer all of those questions. All right, everybody, when we're talking about the perimeter today, this is again, like I said before, one of the most questioned things and for good reason. So first thing, what I like to do. So when the players are entering the zone, and coming in on the outside, we're talking about the perimeter. I like to stay, obviously, with good depth in this area. And then as I hit the hash marks, I like to just stand inside my post, right on my post here. And once they get lower below and into this area, I like to do RVH because, again, this is just something that I'm comfortable with to play inside my post, we call it. Again, once they're above the hash marks, you can play puck on body, but once they hit the hash marks and get below here, I like to just stand right against my post. It's just something that I've always been comfortable with. Now, big now there. What I like my goalies to do. That is completely different. And again, when I'm coaching, everything that I always say is you need to be comfortable with this situation. I have my opinions and I want you to do things the way that you feel comfortable, but at the same time, it has to be working. We have to be having success. So what I like my goalies to do is off the rush, I like them to be an overlap. So as they get on the outside of the ice, again, you'll be puck on body, but once you hit the hash marks here and get lower, I like my goalies to be an overlap. Sorry, here's our post. I like my goalies to have one foot here and one foot here and to be an overlap. I just, I like it so much better for my goaltenders. They've had a lot of success playing outside their posts and they're comfortable with it. Again, I like to do things a little bit different. I'm older, but again, if I'm coaching a junior goalie or even a younger goalie, especially a young kid, overlap off the rush all day long. Now, a couple things. Once that, is, say this player keeps going and doesn't attack this area, keeps going down the perimeter, hits the goal line, you have to always make a read based on what this player is showing you, based on their body language, their eyes, and what they're looking for, because two things. Sometimes you end up getting stuck outside if they make a play or whatever, and that is okay, because if they go all the way around, then you just turn, rotate, push to your far post. But the other thing, if they stay along the perimeter and we think it's not a threat, they're not gonna fire it at us, we can now transition, so we're in that overlap, to get our feet back inside the post. And when we get onto the ice right after this, I'll show you all the differences and what that exactly look like, looks like. So a couple things to always take into consideration though, right? Is this player by themselves? Because that, that does make a difference, but again, my goalies with the pats, they found a comfort zone to be outside that post regardless if this is a single player or if there is a middle lane high drive or in this area because you always have to have your head on a swivel. For me, maybe I'm just a little bit slower now and I'm comfortable to be inside my post, especially if there is this player here or anything like that. And just for any goalies out there, rec league, high levels, anything, you always have to know when the players are entering the zone, what is coming at you. That is always so important. A lot of goaltenders get so puck focused on this entry, right? A lot of times, any team when they're coming up the ice, say it's three on two or anything like that, they always want to kick the puck to the outside, right? And usually if, say, let's say it is a three on two, this, this player is going to drive the D back and then they'll have this third guy come sit up high, right? This player is to middle lane drive all the way to the net to push this defense in back. So either they have a play there off the pads or they go through that seam to this player. So again, anytime you're, the other team's entering the zone, you have to have your head on a swivel and understand what is coming. But again, usually the puck always gets out to the outside and that's how it enters. So like again, we're talking about the perimeter. Again, your, your puck on body, puck on body. Once we hit the hash, now you gotta make your decision. And again, I'm more comfortable to be inside that post. You'll see when we get onto the ice what that looks like. But again, I want all my goalies in that overlap as long as possible. Okay, they get to the goal line, not a threat. 
boom, transition my feet back inside. That might even be a reverse transition if they end up getting in here right away. Again, we'll talk about that once we get on the ice. All right, goalies, now that we're on the ice and we're talking about breaking down the perimeter, we're gonna go over all the movements and positions that we're gonna be in. So again, like I said before, me as a coach, I love for my goalies to get into overlap off of the rush. But again, I personally, when I still play, I am more comfortable inside my post. And that's just a personal preference. I've been like that my whole life. Do what works for you. My goalies on the paths, they like to be outside the post. And a lot of goalies in the NHL are starting to move to that off the rush. So what that's going to look like off the rush is obviously we're going to be following a puck carrier, following a puck carrier, and we're not worrying about our post. We're getting, so we're overlapped, meaning my foot is actually outside the post. And we can still have good mobility if we need to go this way, need to go back up there. But this allows me to really seal the short side a lot better. So a couple things about overlap. When the player is walking down that wall, you really have to make a good read based on eyes, body language, everything. Every situation is a little bit different based on what that player is showing us. Because if that player gets below the goal line and we, we think that we can adjust, well, we can either, if the play gets close enough and we think it's a threat, we can transition into our RVH. That was really sloppy, but that's one option. The other thing we can do is just if they, we think that's gonna be a non-threat, they get below that goal line, we're here, we're outside our post, we're in that overlap, boom, we can transition and now we're inside. And now if they come above the goal line and attack, we can get into that RVH, or if they keep going behind the net, you'll make that read. But again, sometimes, I've seen it happen many times, where my goalies on the pats, they, they went down and they got stuck right here and the player went that way. So now you're in a foot race with a big rotation to push into RVH. So again, it's a, very, it's a personal preference thing, but if we can learn to get comfortable outside of our post in that overlap, I think it's gonna help so much. You see those bad goals against in the NHL and RVH because they're an RVH off the rush and you get beat short side. One, that's a really good shot, but the overlap is there to get rid of that goal. So again, I like my goalies to be an overlap off the rush and now when I play, I still do play surprisingly, I am more comfortable being on the perimeter on my post and if they attack the net, then just going into RVH. I've always been like that and again, maybe it's just because I am older, but to me, being inside my post is my comfort zone. This is just a thing. If you can learn to overlap and be comfortable with overlap off the rush, I definitely think there's so many more benefits compared to going into reverse. Reverse VH is used to seal the short side, and again, it's a much overused position. Drill number one has three different variations of what you're gonna work on to learn to be comfortable on the perimeter. So drill number one, variation one, is just walking down the perimeter with small adjustments into that overlap position. Okay, that's the first variation, very simple. Variation number two is again, you're gonna be walking the perimeter with small adjustments, small adjustments, boom, you're gonna be transitioning your foot inside the net. Again, that player got below the goal line and we had time to get inside. And the last one, is gonna be walking that perimeter, walking that perimeter with small adjustments, and then getting into reverse. Again, I'm in player skates right now with no edges, haven't been sharpened in two years, and I can still do it. So if I can do it with these conditions, you can do it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Please let us know in the comments below or anything else you'd like us to go over.